right guys, so high in the main. Um, just fixing to drill a hole through this bulkhead again. Uh, we plugged it a while back. Filled in all that, uh, I don't know, it's a pretty ragged cut through there. Just kind of cleaned it all up. And put in a new block of foam. We're gonna go ahead and cut it out. I uh, guess we're gonna punch, what do we got? A three and five eighths inch hole saw here. That'll give us clearance for um, the packing gland that's also gonna be mounted on there. So, uh, I still have a line coming off the, um, the coupler right here. And so I just kinda pulled it tight to where that hole is, the original hole more or less, and uh, got this angle. It's not quite a 90, it's just slightly off of a 90. Um, not quite sure what I did with my angle finder. At right this here. Point. I had it a minute ago. On the floor. Okay. On the deck. On the deck. Locked so, the yeah, it's just shy of a 90. So I'm just going to kind of use that as a reference um, to drill my hole. It's about, I guess, about three inches thick now because we added another layer of foam on the backside in the shaft alley. So I want to try and get more or less uh, the correct angle that uh, that the shaft will be going penetrating that bulkhead. So yeah, I'm just going to pilot drill it and then um, and then we'll try and saw a hole through it. Step one and now for the fun part. So we're getting this hole put through here again so we can get our string line back through and then we can get our um, bearing block for the shaft positioned roughly uh, just going off our string line kind of get the height and more or less the alignment and then we can take some measurements and see uh, how big to make our, our bearing blocks we can get the angle and the height and and start uh, laying those up and once we get those bearing blocks made and get them in place, we'll be able to get our, our shaft set down there. The bolt down, you can see that. All right, we'll bust out that first chunk. Might have to come in from the other side, huh? Yep, maybe. Wow. That's oh, good. There you go. Boys. Needless to say, where it tabs in, it turned into some pretty thick glass. Wow. Not drag on that side. That's the thick layer of glass there. Well, no wonder. <laughs> How did we end up with that much glass in there? Is that actually what the heck? Glass. I don't know how that ended up so thick. Oh my gosh. It's not all that thick, but there's, yeah. Okay. There's a funk of glass there. I was thinking it was just rub off from the whole saw. Holy cow. Well, I guess that was that first couple layers of mat that we laid up, and then we uh, then we put that plug in there with a layer of glass on it, which is about a quarter. And then we tabbed in the stringers and leveled it. 
Uh, it all added up, huh? Yeah. Well, let's see if I can fish that line through. <laughs> Fisherman skills to the test. Oh man, he's pro. Yeah, let's go pro. Okay, well we'll see how this looks. I guess we needed this line back in here so that we can determine where this bearing is going to go. I guess we figured it was going to go... I don't know. I guess we didn't figure that yet. Did I think we figured somewhere? right where... It was right in the middle of our shaft alley cover, what will be the shaft alley cover. Right. Because right. there's going to be a brace here, there's going to be a brace here. So we can lay a couple of those down and then we'll see. Yep. And we'll position that. and. Of course, that's why we need the string line, is so that we can uh, get the heights correct for it. So we'll just go ahead and grab that. Okay. But the important thing is that the line comes through, and now we can take our bearing, and once we determine exactly where it's going to be, we can just bring it in here and just kind of eyeball it and get a approximate height of our bearing blocks. So we will need to leave some space below this, probably for a split roller bearing. Um, the form factor on them is a little bit deeper. So I think we're gonna take that into account if we have clearance over the top, which we may or may not. Um, it gets pretty shallow over here. And that split roller bearing is taller than this. But we're hoping that there's room in there for that. If not, I guess we'll just go with the with this, I mean, this is tried and true, it is good, but we wanted to be able to leave space to retrofit it too, to the other one, um, in case that's something that we want to do in the future. So I guess we got to play that one by ear, mm -hmm. but at any rate, we are going to uh, design the bearing block that this sits on to provide enough clearance for that other split roller bearing. And so we'll just add some shims underneath this, which you need anyways to get it shimmed up properly. So this will go in there somewhere and we'll just measure the, the lengths down and then probably deduct an, an inch or so and then just make up the difference with, with, a, with, a, with a plate and then some, some small shims to, to get it just right. At the end of the day, We'll have a dial indicator here and we'll put it on the shaft and then we can spin it and we'll see if there's any run out side to side and up and down and then we can shim it accordingly. These basically self-center because they're slotted this way. So the side to side, it should self-center itself with no problem. So the run out there shouldn't be an issue. It'll be the up down. If you pull this down too much, you're gonna put a, a bow in your shaft. It's, it's up too high you need to put a bow in your shaft. So that's where your shims come in. And also a dial indicator to make sure that you are running true. And then you can tighten it down and you double check it. And if you have really any more than three foul run out on that, then you're gonna need to try and get it a little bit closer. That's kind of the, the number that we wanna be under three foul of run out anywhere on this. Yeah, well, we're moving forward. That's a good feeling. It is. It's gonna be a tight squeeze past the bearing block. Is it doable? 
That's why we gotta build it as we go. Stuff's gotta be in here beforehand. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, folks. So, last time we were down here, we had just cut a hole for the shaft through the engine room bulkhead. Yeah, and we were starting to line up our, uh, our bearings, um, kind of get an idea where the supports for the bearings will go, the bearing blocks. And we're also cutting the first layer of our shaft alley covers. So yeah. I know we've had a lot of questions. Um, a lot of people don't really understand what is going on here. So we'll just kind of maybe just revisit that real quick for new folks that maybe didn't catch one of the episodes where we talked about that. but. So this vessel was originally set up just to freeze on board salmon in the round, and the shaft alley has never been sealed. And so in order to tank this vessel, and that is to fill these fish holds with water, this needs to be watertight. Otherwise, the water will just flow into the engine room and flood it, and you're gonna have a lot of problems. So that being said, um, that's what we've been working towards is um, making these shaft alleys, number one, sealed, so we can fill this with water. That means we can uh, RSW salmon, like refrigerated seawater for salmon, or we can flood it if we're live tanking crab. Um, it also makes things like cleanup really easy if you don't have a bunch of nasty gurry and blood and stuff going into the shaft alley, because you have to picture that this is all gonna be pretty much sealed off. And it's just another thing to have to clean if it was open or unsealed. It just had a, a cover on it. Um, the other thing that, that we lacked was a sump, and that's basically an area for water to collect. And then it's attached to a pump, and it allows you to wash your fish hold and then suck the water through the sump, into the pump, and overboard. We need that. We also need to be able to do that to drain the fish hold if you were tanked for crab. Mm -hmm. So that's what this whole project has kind of been involved. This is like phase one of this fish hold is to deal with this shaft alley, make it tankable, make the sealed and put in sumps. And then we're also dividing the fish hold with the bulkhead to put it into two. And that way we don't have to have a fear of being over tanked where you fill up your whole area with water and find out that your vessel is st sitting too low to be safe. Um, it basically compartmentalizes it, it adds buoyancy. This front one can be tanked, the back one can be dry. We can carry ice or bait back there if we're fishing crab. Um, if we're just doing salmon or whatever, you can have extra ice back there you can still put fish in there. So there's several reasons why we're going through this whole process. And to some folks, it probably seems like really excessive and why didn't you just buy a new boat? Well, the simple answer to that is boats are very, very expensive, especially the ones that get into the size that we're at now, 48, 50 foot and over, they get expensive very quickly. Um, for instance, a brand new Limit Saner, if you had one built today, would probably set you back about two and a half million dollars. And that's no joke. It's just expensive to do. They're expensive to build. Old ones on the market in this size range or even a little bit shorter, 42 to 48 foot, $300,000. Vessels that are the same age as this boat. So it's very expensive. And what we did was we took a vessel and we're putting it into a different fishery, but we're doing a lot of the work is just gonna be sweat equity for us. We do have a pretty big in investment in materials, um, but a lot of it's also just sweat equity. Mm -hmm. And when we're finished with this vessel, it's gonna be worth a lot more than anything comparable on the market. Yeah, and we're no strangers to this kind of work. Yeah. The whole fishtail, all yeah. on our own, so. Yeah, the fishtail, we added the top house on the fishtail. Uh, redecked it, we put in new bulkheads, we put in new fuel tanks. We've gone through every inch of that boat, essentially. I don't think there's, there's actually nothing as far as the glass and structure of it goes that we've ever hired out. No, there we've, isn't. We've done it all on our own, so. Yeah. 
And so, um, yeah, we're no strangers to, to this kind of work, to fabrication, to rebuilding things. It doesn't scare us. Uh, a lot of people were concerned about the stringers. We pretty much knew going into this that, that they were going to have to be replaced. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a positive. We didn't go down there with a the knife and poke it, but we just assumed that we would be replacing them from the beginning. And um, the same with the shaft. The good thing about that is that we know what's in the bottom of this boat. You know, we, we know the bones are good and we're not just going over something and, you know, future problem for future us. That's what we don't want. We want to start out new because everything that we put on top of this is going to be expensive materials too. So it makes absolutely no sense to put in new sealed shaft alley covers on a rotten base and then have to come back and, and somehow try and save these and salvage them because each one of these panels is several hundred dollars. By the time you lay the fiberglass on it and everything else, all of a sudden we're in the three or four hundred dollar range. So it just makes sense to do it from the beginning and be done with it and save us work later. And that's the, the short story long, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so anyways, it's coming right along. Um, we made a lot of progress. That was one thing that we did right, was take the time to get set up good, get a good working space built, and an extremely robust waterproof cover over our heads. So anyways, right now, we're just in the stage of of getting this first layer cut. Um, these are already laminated on the other side, just like this one. So it'll basically be laminated side down, and then we'll have this layer. We'll glass over this, we'll wrap it, and then we'll put another layer on, and we'll laminate that over the top. So we'll have two inches of foam, which gives us about our value of 10, give or take a little bit. Um, close to three quarter inch of laminate. This is a little bit shy of a quarter inch each layer. And so we'll have three layers. When you laminate two of these together, it's very, very rigid, but not rigid enough for us. And we're not taking any chances. <laughs> so every 20 inches in the middle of this panel, right here, again here, and again there, all the way down, we're gonna have uh, an additional support underneath. And so that's what I'm just getting ready to do here. Um, this is the first one that I cut, so these will be notched into the stringer right here, and it'll be laid in just like that, so it's flush here, and then these can overlap on top of it, and so this will also be tabbed in and glassed, and that's just going to give it one more layer and kind of a frame, so to speak, every 20 inches, and that's going to give us some additional uh, rigidity so we don't have to worry about these flexing mm -hmm. and uh, we should be good. Make a nice heavy bridge for the gap there. Yep. And also it'll make a great transition for the seams on the underside of the panels. Yeah, it'll be a good framework so mm -hmm. that's where we're at there so that's kind of what I'm doing now is I just got the first one cut here. I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna start notching these stringers to receive these. And then when we get ready to start laying the stuff down, they'll be ready to go. So people also asked how we intend to keep the shaft alley dry or, or what's the purpose of it, um, how we'll set up our pumps, whether we'll set them up beforehand and test them or anything like that, like fill this up and pump it out. Um, the answer to that is basically no. Uh, what we'll have here is that uh, the shaft alley was just flat before and it just had a little tiny cutout where a pipe came down and went into just a tiny little sump. And so when we re-poured the concrete here, we stopped it short up here to create this nice deep sump right here. So this does get water in it from the shaft packing. It needs to leak. That lubricates the shaft. It also helps keep it cool. Um, when I say leak, I'm talking about a drip every second or two. This will get some water in it. Occasionally we pump it out. It's, uh, that's pretty much how most boats work unless they have a dripless shaft packing on them. Um, we're not going that route because 
there's a possibility that we'll be freezing on this boat again and those use a port on them for water to go through which could freeze and and possibly damage the the packing system and lead to uh, failure and so we don't want to have that we just want a, a good time tested one that we know can get cold and freeze and it won't cause problems and so the water that does collect in here will run forward into the sump right here and then coming out of this bulkhead somewhere in here we'll just have a pipe coming down as a suction line it's very simple on the other side it'll be connected to a pump so you just turn on the pump it sucks water out it'll empty everything out and then you shut it down so uh it's a simple design that's how it was set up before that's how they're usually set up on vessels anyways you have the same thing going in the bilge for an emergency bilge pump um it'll probably be tied into that same system on the other side and yeah this thing will hold a lot of water in here so you really only need to pump it out occasionally and when you're out fishing you just check it every day um, number one if you have excessive water you're going to know about it and number two it's just good to keep it dry and then in town you can just monitor it from there just come down and pump it out every week or so this will accumulate more than a week of water at least um, so yeah other than that that's kind of where we're at all right so we're just about to notch these uh, stringers out right here to receive this cross brace. Yeah, so I'm just about to start this first one here. I just have it marked out, so just cut a 45 in there, and then I'll probably have to, oh gosh, I don't really know. I mean, I can cut in, or I can cut in with a angled grinder, I guess, but the center web kind of makes it a bit tough, so. Just go down through it. Mm -hmm. Go like this. Well, it got really windy out, huh? Yeah. Should have just not put that in. Nah. Oh, notch the half right. Oh, you could. On next ones. 
Yeah, maybe just that. Mm -hmm. That might be better. Might be, yeah. Because then, yeah. Because you know how it is if it's just a hair short, it's like a dip. And you gotta putty it in. Yep. Be easier just to put putty on the inside and. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. That'll yeah. be fun. Just a couple little touch ups. Actually, that's not even a big deal right there because it's all just gonna get wrapped anyways, so. Cool. Don't even have to deal with it. You'll probably just cut them all through that way, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And so plans evolve. <laughs> Trial and error, and then you realize something can be a little easier on you. So we were just gonna take our piece here and see how it's shaped, and we were gonna put it all the way across like that and notch it in, but upon, upon cutting this and thinking about it, uh, probably just take out this center web and this foam and then beat this outside layer of glass. Yeah. Just flood it up to that. So it's basically just gonna slip in there like that. And while this has some bend right now, once you put you glass another layer to this, and then you glass another layer on top of that. This won't have no more bend. It will be extremely rigid at that point. So, yeah, I think that might work good. I'll just try that first. Okay. And we'll see what happens. I guess it doesn't really matter too much one way or another. Whatever seems easiest. Mm hmm. See how easy it is to. To cut this inside web here without having a big huge mess. Or just leave that and end it there. What if you just did that? Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Let's just do that. Yeah, sounds good. So I can probably just cut to about here on these and then we'll just mash that full of putty. Mm hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Just leave that material right there because that actually, you know, that's a lot of rigidity this way when you push down on that edge. Mm -hmm. Perfect. The bearing blocks are going to pose like a big obstacle because they're up so high that it won't be able to get underneath here to do this work. So we have to like do one panel at a time 
and then probably do the one with the bearing block we'll have and reach into our hatch and tab, which is going to be horribly miserable and miserable. Yeah, the whole thing is going to be because like going to be in a box in here doing this work. We'll figure it out. You can see how much structure this is going to add. If, if we push on that, it flexes. Yeah, but this one up here has already been tabbed underneath. And if I push on that, there's very little flex on it already. So now envision putting another layer on that that's glued to this, and then another layer on that. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna have any flex at all. It adds a lot wrong. of structure very quickly. Yeah. Like with these stringers, a single layer had a lot of flex, but when we were done with them, when they were both laminated together, they were just solid. Yeah. Very, very solid. So we get this next one, same thing, laid out, we'll cut. We'll just continue on down the line here. All right, everyone, we're just over here at the dock in front of the Harbor Masters. We've got the truck up there. Set the shaft crate on the uh, bull rail there. Hooked it up to our single. Uh, just fixing to lift it down here. So get the popcorn ready. you got there <laughs> yeah, our usual sketch factor but actually not very sketchy yeah just uh bad. just humping the 200 ish pound shaft and the probably 80 pound crate over here yeah i think the shaft was well i'm not really sure i think the other one was 250 but that was without all the chunk on it too yeah uh let me set you guys up right here I guess we could just clear a spot here too and get this thing broke down. Let me just slide it this way, huh? Yeah. Get those quarters out of the way. And you want right there so that hang it up on them. What happened over there? I know. That's so nice and Oh, good. Get your old pulley up there, right? Oh, I should. <laughs> I was going to lift it right here, actually. Yeah, put it through that pulley. At least then you can be on good solid ground. True. And you can just unplug those cords and throw them in the hole to get okay. that one out of the way. You got it. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Tail shaft. 
shaft to join its counterpart right there. I think we'll put it right over here, uncrate this thing so we don't have the crate kicking around again, and also get to take a look at it too. Okay, so we'll just take it and mock it this way. Is that our plan? Yeah. Oh, this way, right here. Nice. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna like rotate here, huh? Watch your eyes. Seems as though they had it banded tight, didn't they? Yeah. Always flatten your nail. Your feet will thank you. There's like a million staples, huh? <laughs> they were not shy right there. Whoa, there it is. Ta da! Uh huh. I see the taper. There she is. Tail shaft. That'll be pretty nice to have. Brand new and in place and not have to worry about. Well worth the money, it's gonna be well worth the peace of mind. When we bought this vessel, we expected to be doing that anyways. 100% with the intermediate, that was never an option at all. Mm -hmm. This one we weren't sure of, but after we removed it and saw the, the crevice corrosion, that's electrolysis that's going into the shaft, that's exactly how stainless fails, it's inside and it'll spin off, it'll fracture and spin off and, and you'll see the root of the corrosion, the beginning of it, it'll be inside the part. So yeah, happy to get that swapped out and uh, a little bit expensive, but I mean, in the long term, peace of mind, one season, maybe a couple of days of fishing or less. Mm hmm. For sure. And if this happened in the middle of a season, well, I mean, at the very best, you're a month out. That's if they get right on it and they ship it right away, and yeah, you're three weeks. Yep, it's always hard telling. Best I case mean, scenario. In three yeah. weeks, everything can be over season can be ended so yeah well we'll bring you back when we delve into something else I guess for now I guess we'll say goodbye and yeah all right well thank you guys for watching be sure to like comment subscribe leave comments down below if you have any questions or comments or yeah yeah appreciate reading all of them so sure do yeah, we appreciate your support and we'll see you again soon. Yep, bye guys.